Cheers everyone. I hope you are doing all fine. I am Garrick, roll number 17 BP32, standing before you to speak on the topic of drill stem testing assigned to us by our respected faculty mentor Dr. Pawan Gupta. My heartiest gratitude to him for his valuable guidance. I hope you like my presentation. Now without further ado, let's dive right into it. So today we are going to cover a short introduction on drill stem testing, its purpose or objectives equipment or tools that are part of DST, the operations that are carried out as a part of drill stem testing, analysis and interpretation of the DST pressure charts, and short description about the multi-day DST. So to introduce, DST is a simple tool with a valve and a packer run to the testing zone and sampling of the produced fluids is done at the required depth. Pressure recorders are significant tools that record flow and shut-in pressure along with the complete evolution of the formation. DSTs are carried out both in open and caged holes. The various purposes of DST are to check the productive capacity of the formation, to check the type of fluids or gas produced, to know the initial reservoir pressure, to check the presence of depletion, effective permeability, formation damage if any, presence of anomaly, PBT analysis, bottom hole temperature, to check the radius of investigation, evaluating cement jobs, and casic link detection. These are the sole purposes of DST. Now there are various tools which forms a part of the DST. First is the anchor which is used to support the weight to set the packer. Pressure recorders are run to measure the flow and shut-in pressures. Perforated anchors are made of drill collars stock which is perforated and allows fluids to enter the string. Packer is used for zonal isolation. Bypass valve is used for pressure equalization above and below the packer after the test is terminated. Tester valve is used to obtain the flow and shut-ins and usually incorporates a sample chamber. Drill stem accomplishes a means of getting the test recovery to the surface and serves purpose of settling weight on the test tool. Control heads are a valve assembly used to control the well at surface. From the diagram, the various tools of DHT are drill stem, reverse circulation valve, multi-flow evaluator, bypass valves, hydraulic jars, safety joint, packers and perforated anchors and pressure recorders. Now coming to the operations performed by DHT, first of all DHT is run on drill strings with a combination of packers and surface actuated valves. Pressure chart is a plot of pressure over time. The pressure chart from the DST is obtained and interpreting it we get increase in pressure at A due to mud hydrostatic pressure, a sudden increase in pressure due to squeeze pressure at B, at C the tool is opened for incoming influx thus there is a pressure drop which is called the initial flow period, at D the tool is shut and thus pressure builds up which is called the initial shut in period, again at G the tool is opened for the final flow period. At the point H, the test tool is finally closed, packers are released and pressure recorders records mud hydrostatic pressure at E. At F, the tool is pulled out of hold. Now, the sample is obtained from the drill pipe or from the surface if a flowing DST is used at this point. The initial flow period lasts for 5 to 10 minutes whereas the initial shut-in period is around 30 to 60 minutes. The final flow period is about 30 minutes to 2 hours and the final shut-in period is generally twice the final flow period. Both the static mud column and the setting of the packer causes mud filtrate to be squished in the formation. Initial flow period relieves the overpressured conditions and restores formation to nearly original state. The initial flow period initiates the equalization of pressure of fluids near the filtrate invaded zone. If the mud compression effects and the mud filtered effects are expelled in the initial flow, then the initial shut-in period gives the most accurate static reservoir pressure. Primary consideration is the maximum time the tool can be kept on the well bore. Slower the rate of influx, longer should be the final flow and vice versa. If the pressure of the fluid resists further influx, final shut-in should be initialized. The final shut-in period is used to detect extrapolated pressure and permeability changes. Now there are some predetermined criteria to select build-up time based on the KH term. If it is 10 ml feet, build-up should be at least 2 hours, whereas if it is more than that, build-up should be of 30 minutes or 1 hour. 
Now the vital actions that needs to be performed during the test are while going in hole, multi-flow evaluator should be closed, bypass valve should be opened and packer is collapsed. In the well flowing scenario, MFE control valves is opened, bypass valves is closed and the packer is set and activated. When the well needs to be shut in, MFE control valve is closed, sample is trapped at bottom hole flowing conditions, bypass valve is closed and the packer is still set and activated. While pulling out of hole, packer is retrieved. Now keeping an eye on the series of events correlated with the pressure curves it yields at A, there is first thribble in. Thribble is just three cents of pipe attached together. At B, there is last thribble entry. At C, the tool has reached downhole at preset location. At D, the packer is set and there is surge in pressure due to squeeze pressure. At E, the tool is opened and there is a sharp pressure decline. Now the solid line denotes a critical flow and a dotted line denotes a non-critical flow. Critical flow in high permeability zones will cause the flow of fluid into the drill pipe through the bottom hole choke to be independent of pressure inside the drill pipe. It will produce a nearly constant pressure throughout the flow period whereas in non-permeability zone the pressure charts exhibit extremely low flowing pressure. At F the tool is closed and the buildup is complete at G. The equalizing valve is opened at H and the packer is unseated at I. Pulling out of hole starts at J and ends at K. 1 represents the running in time, 2 represents the flowing period, 3 the shutting period and 4 the pulling out time. DST has a quite a few assumptions namely radial flow, infinite reservoir, single compressible fluid and sometimes constant producing rate. Analysis is done based on Horner's plot that is plotting PWS versus log T plus delta T by delta T and extrapolating it to estimate the static formation pressure where delta T is shut in time and T is the flowing time. The permeability and the skin should be taken out using the given formulas where M is the slope of the curve. The key point here is both the buildups should have equal static reservoir pressure as in the diagram, the y-intercept which represents the same for both the buildups is quite similar which plays a significant role in the test. For constant flowing wells, for example gas wells, we use transient pressure analysis methods and for low permeability cases where the flow rate is not constant, multi-rate analysis is used. For this process, the fluid pressure in the drill pipe is converted to equivalent fluid production rates considering density of produced fluids and internal diameter of pipe. Coming to the interpretation part, pressure charts gives information about failure of the tools which is obtained from papers published by Black and the productive capacity of the reservoir whether it has high or low permeability. The viscosity in the test is obtained from the API gravity versus the viscosity plot. Interpretation of the DHT pressure curves is highly enforced by large doses of engineering judgment and experience. Here are some cases of misruns that we deduce from the pressure charts and we will see each of them one by one. In the first case, if the tool fails to open, the pressure recorders will continue to record the mud hydrostatic pressure. If the packer failed, we won't get the shut-in pressure, rather every time we will measure the mud hydrostatic pressure as there will be an incomplete zonal isolation. Another anomaly is that if we do not get the shut-in pressure correctly. If there is a choke plugging, there will be an obstruction in the path of influx and thus there is disturbance in pressure trends in the flow period. Similarly, if the anchor is plugged, there is difficulty in shutting pressure measurements and we will not get the average reservoir pressure. Also, if the clock is not working, it will lead to pressure anomalies and the test will be interrupted in the weed way. Pressure charts also provides information about the formation characteristics. Likewise, if there is no permeability formation, there will be no flow or shut-in period. In case of very low permeability formation, the influx incoming is less and thus pressure buildup is very low. If the incoming influx is very less and the pressure buildup is very slow, it indicates that the sand phase might be plugged. If in a gas test and water is encountered, A represents water cushion rising to the surface, B represents water cushion being produced, C represents flowing dry gas, and D represents tool shutting. In the case of high permeability formation, 
and there exists a critical flow, the pressure is more or less constant. Moreover, the choke size affects the pressure trends. In the case of a non-critical flow, pressure buildup is very gradual. Lastly, flowing pressure upstream or choke remain constant until back pressure due to liquid accumulation inside pipe became excessive resulting in a diminishing flow rate. Thus, this shows excessive fluid head inside pipe. Apart from the dual DST test, multi rate DST test can also be achieved if tools are flexible or the choke sizes can be regulated. Multi rate DST is important because it proves reservoir depletion based on build up trends, it gives accurate KH values, also, the change in skin values over time gives us some idea whether the well would clean up when put on permanent production. The diagram you see up here has three rounds of buildups and shut-ins. In the same way, we can execute it for a number of times. Now, here are the references or guidebooks the viewers can check for further guidance. Thank you everyone for your keen interest. Just a gentle reminder, wash your hands frequently and avoid going out of home to fight the COVID-19 outbreak. Thank you.